be agreed to. Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable Shane Jones. Technically, technically Mr. Deputy Speaker, but uh, with the augustness of the position, I thoroughly enjoy regarding you, sir, as Mr. Speaker. And given that uh, you have more than a passing level of interest in what's happened in Tamaki Makoto, we now move to another part of Aotearoa. Engari te tuatahi me mihi atu a hau ki te whānau. Uh, I roto i tēnā pito o Aotearoa ko tai mai ki waenga tonu i a mātou ngā kai toranga pū e rangi rawa mātou ngā kanohi Māori. Uh, tēnā koutou. E kara e beben, tēnei anō te mihi atu ki ape. Ka maharatau i o koutou mātua, te wā i a wī, i a pādre huata, uh, i a meki, i a Scott, i a nā kau mātua kato a uh, kōrero ki te pō. Kōrero ko koutou, hei pīkau, hei whakatutuki e nei mahi i waiho mai e rātou hei akatutuki uh, mā tēnei reanga. So this piece of legislation, and I want to uh, read out, it, um, it follows a fairly uh, important format, which is that it uses our Māori language, and it also identifies, sir, the deed of settlement, because let's not overlook how difficult and often unrewarding it is for hapu leaders to take on these roles where there are lots of reasons to doubt whether or not it's the right thing to do. There's always problems whether or not this is the best strategy to pursue, because uh, no doubt within the Kahunganu broader tribal community, there would have been a debate as to do you stick as one large entity like Ngaitahu or do you move into smaller groupings? But that's a decision that was made by the people from that iwi. And uh, long may they be good stewards of it, sir. But I want to record the names in this bill. I want to record the names in this bill because I, having uh, suffered a few of those misfortunes as having been formerly the chairman of the Fisheries Commission, know that your good works do not go unpunished. So, sir, I want to acknowledge that Bevan Maihi Taylor a man that is very well known to a host of us Māori MPs as having been around in the world of Māori politics, uh, resource management issues uh, minister. In fact, I took Geoffrey Palmer in 1988 to Ahui about water in Kahunganu. And Bevan Taylor as one of the people who, on a busy weekend, for reasons best known to himself, came to the Hui. And uh, he is still uh, representing his people. Tanya. Marama Petrus, oh, te rangatiro te nga ingoa, Petrus. <laughs> Hopmans, Tamihana Pekka, Pekka Manaina, no stranger to me, a very able accountant and someone who was the financial steward of the Potama Trust. Charmaine Dawn Kui Butler, Kerry Donna Nuku, Justin Owen Ian Puna, Frederick Roy Mardi Reti and Elaine Rangituya Taylor, the trustees of the Maunga Haururu Tangitu Trust. And the reason I want to recite their names through uh, Mr. Speaker and to the Minister is that these people deserve to be acknowledged for what has been no doubt an arduous task and politics in Māori and being what it is, things move very quickly. And what you thought took a long time can be forgotten in a flash. So to these Fano and to these people, I salute you on behalf of my colleagues today for taking an issue which doesn't have the media notoriety of something, dare I say it, like my own tribe, Ngāpuhi Nui Tonu, or uh, the Ngaitahu or the Tainui, it's in an area of Aotearoa, not unlike Ngāti Pāhauera, that doesn't capture a lot of national media attention. So, sir, let the record show, and I'm sure when we get to the select committee, um, people will uh, arrive uh, with their submissions, some troublesome, but largely positive. So let, let, let's talk about why this is an important settlement. It's an important settlement because not only is there land and forest involved, but there are protocols involved. And in talking about the protocol, sir, I want to uh, isolate the importance of the fisheries protocol. And in doing that, I want to acknowledge who unfortunately, because she's yet to give her maiden speech, the successful contender of the recent election Mecca Whaitiri in Ikoroa, Whenu, uh, Ikoroa Rahuti. And uh, as I said on the Māori News, sir, there are illustrious parliamentarians that have come from this part of Māoridom. 
There is a photo that was delivered here in 1998 by the trustees and the whānau of kahung, uh, various Fano of Kahunganu from the Omahu Morai for Tareha, the first parliamentarian from this part of the Motu, and he was then replaced by Kraitiana. And after Kraitiana came a very notable Matua of Kahunganu stock, Henare Tomoana. And after him came the redoubtable Wee Pere, who left the famous land trust in the East Coast called the Wee Pere Trust. And after Wee Pere, he fell to Sir Aparanangata's mentor, who was Sir James Carroll, otherwise known as Timmy Kara, who held both a Pākehā seat and a Māori seat. And then Wee Pere came back, and then he was defeated by the greatest of all Māori parliamentarians, Sir Aparanangata. But no one lasts forever, sir. He then was defeated by Tiaki Omana, or otherwise known as Jack Ormond. And when Jack Ormond uh, completed his stint, Tipene Watene, who was a famous figure of New Zealand Rugby League, died in Matangirea, our Māori Affairs Select Committee, in the late 60s. And sir, after him came Brown Rewiti of Ngaitirangi. And after Brown Rewiti, sir, came uh, Dr. Peter Tapsell who, if there was ever a man who joined the wrong party, it was probably him, but such is life. Things have been said about, in a similar vein about Shane Jones, but that's another matter. I couldn't possibly work with Hone Harawira. I couldn't possibly work with Hone Harawira. And, sir, after Dr Tapsell, after Dr Tapsell, there was a short burst, along with my uh, tuakana over there, Tauhenare, of Mr Delamere. And after Mr Delamere was Parekura Horomia. And after Parekura Horomia is the person waiting for her maiden speech. So, tēnākwe e te tuahine. So, we no doubt um, look forward to receiving submissions because not only are we wanting to make sure that the bill captures everything that the whānau believe they've agreed to with the minister, but that the structure enables efficient decision-making because it is very difficult to turn a surplus out of assets that are, that are in neglected parts of New Zealand. I say neglected in this sense. It is not a major hive of economic activity like Tāmaki Makoto. <coughs> Tāmaki Makoto has its own dynamic. When you look at Tauranga, Tāmaki Makoto and Hamilton, that's what the economists sir, call the golden triangle. Well, uh, there's the golden north, but that's something else. And uh, there is gold to be had in other parts of Aotearoa, but when we support settlements located in the provinces, we want to ensure that the structures lead to efficient decision making so that not too much putea is wasted on running the organisation, rather it's dedicated to building the surplus and to supporting the efforts that uh, will be extensive in terms of making a profit out of the, uh, or Pauahi, I believe it's called, and part of the forest estate that's being put back there. The protocol, sir, not unlike the Maunga Authority, talked about in Tāmaki Makoto, are very important. Why are they important? Because the reality is that all the property rights that we seek through settlements cannot be secured exclusively to tangata whenua. We are now in a situation where, yes, it's important that we reflect the tangata whenua interest through the settlements, but it cannot, unfortunately, be done to the total exclusion of other stakeholders. And that's just the political nature of the process that we're involved in. So that's why, sir, I think that, uh, along with my colleagues, that these protocols are a significant evolution. They didn't exist in the late 80s when we did the Resource Management Act, 1990, in Simon Upton's time. Uh, there was, I think, a reference by Winston Peters and uh, Māori parliamentarians of the time for Kaitiakitanga. That then sent the planning tribunal, the environment tribunal, on a great quest as to what did Kaitiakitanga mean. One of three lawyers and a few Māori consultants may have grown mildly rich as to trying to define it. No doubt the developers complained that they were meeting the costs of that, such, such as political economy in Aotearoa. I wouldn't complain too much about it. So, so, the regional council is referred to in this bill. Who knows whether there will actually be a regional council in this particular part of Aotearoa. We know the regional council is busily sponsoring an irrigation scheme, and I only hope, sir, that settlements of this nature provide a new, new platform for the Kahungunu reps to put forward all the necessary interests to ensure that such irrigation schemes, if they do happen to take place, whether it's in this rohe, South Island or any rohe, they don't take place in uh, neglecting tangata whenua interests, etc. The Regional Council 
in my experience, sir, up and down New Zealand, uh, they do a patchy job when it gets to Māori matters. If the law specifically requires them to go the extra mile, they will. If the law is vague, they'll do very little. But that's just the nature of the types of politicians and often the types of managers that are attracted to regional council. It's when the law forces them to do something. And this, sir, will be the passage of law that will require statutory resource management decisions in that area, hopefully throughout the entirety in time, of Kahunganu to take account of the interests and the right to participate from Kahunganu. Now, sir, the forest that's referred to here is an important forest because it provides jobs. But those jobs, sir, can grow into more valuable propositions with, I believe, the provision of more Māori land for forestry or, sir, the involvement of our Māori people in the actual administration of the forest. So with all these things, sir, of capital transfer, asset transfer and relationships, we salute the people and support the Minister and look forward to the bill going through the Select Committee. Kia ora tātou. Thank you.